So this is the rear cover. Um, I actually ended up buying a uh, complete new rear cover as opposed to just buying a seal, which is what I was going to buy for the old one. There's really nothing wrong with the old cover, uh, but I needed a seal and a gasket. And believe it or not, it was almost cheaper to buy this one all completely assembled with screws in it and everything. So I went that route. So what I did is I took all the screws out except for two to help hold the gasket in place. Looks like it's easiest to run this thing up from the bottom. So let's see if we can do that. Okay, let me just get these top two in a few threads just to kind of hold it in place. So now I'll start a couple of the bolts towards the bottom. Uh, one thing to mention is that they say in the instructions to not lubricate that seal that goes um, uh, rides around the crank. Um, so you, you put it in dry, which seems kind of strange to me, but that's what they say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these bolts started towards the bottom. I didn't get it on video, but um, it pushed on pretty easy. And this is the, it seals around this big area on the crank here. Um, so it's actually kind of pushed on now. I'm going to get the rest of the bolts started. So right now in the rear cover, all the bolts are loose. Um, I don't know if you can see the cover. It moves up and down, kind of almost pivots. Okay, um, It's pivoting around the seal right here. That's really the only thing that's centering it. Uh, the pan seals off on the rail of the block here and then it seals off also on the back of the cover along here. This cover cannot be um, above the rail of the pan, uh, rail of the block. So uh, it, it should be no more than 20 thousandths of an inch below the rail. So GM makes some fancy tool you bolt on here and, and uh, uh, for for getting the cover centered. Um, obviously I don't have that. So I'm just going to use a feeler gauge. So here's my feeler gauge. 10 is what I was going for. 20 is the max that can be below. So as I try the 10, I can feel that it drops down. The 20, I can feel that it's high. So I know I'm in between. And same thing on this side, I can feel it drop down. And the 20, I can feel it's a little bit high. Um, what I wanted to do is just check with a little more accuracy. So I checked with my dial indicator. So I put it on the rail of the block and essentially zero it out. You can see that. And then I just drag it over to the cover and it drops down eh, 14 thousandths of an inch. So I'm well within the tolerance. Drop it over. Um, I'm at six thousandths of an inch below. So both are below. Both are above 20, so I should be good. I can torque the cover down. So these need to be torqued down to 18 foot-pounds. And I can get these other ones from the bottom. One more here. Okay, now. I have half of them I can't get at because of the engine stand. I could leave those until I go to take the engine stand off. I'd probably be okay. I've got yeah, four or five of them torqued down. Um, and I've tightened those up you know, with a, with a hand wrench by hand. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off these engine supports one by one. And then I can get in, in there with the wrench. So I took the bolt out of this one, loosen it up, I can swing it out of the way. And then I can get in here and uh, torque this one that I can now get at. Alright, so I got them all torqued down um, by loosening these up one at a time, moving them out of the way. Some of them I had to totally remove, others I just had to loosen and swing out of the way. But let's double check um, and make sure, after all that, that we are still good um, with our measurements here. So let's zero out our gauge here. So the block is zero, slide it over, uh, so we are, what is that, about 14 still, let's check this side, and slide it over, and there we are, we're still our four, so we're good. This is the original front cover, uh, and I bought a seal, I need to put the seal in, the seal goes here. If you remember on the back cover, um, 
to center the cover on the crank because it needs to you know, seal off here. Uh, the seal kind of self-centered itself for the most part. Like the rear cover, you put the screws in and it's loose. You can see it moving around. And I need to do the same measurement from the rails where the oil pan sits to the cover. And it needs to be below just like I did on the back. But the problem is with the seal. So if I want to center the cover around the crank, put the seal in just like we did with the rear cover, you'll see what the problem is, is that the seal doesn't come in contact with the crank at all. So this cover doesn't self-center. The seal actually seals off on the harmonic balancer. That you can't put the harmonic balancer on and then put the seal on. You have to put the seal on first. Now some tips from the internet is was to put the seal in the cover, leave the cover loose until you put the harmonic balancer on, then it can kind of self-center like the rear. GM makes some special tools that will center the cover. Of course, they're expensive, hard to get. Um, but I found somebody that made a tool that would definitely help with this. This is what the self-centering tool looks like. It's about $50 on the internet. Um, I actually didn't pay $50 for this one. I actually made this one. I took some measurements off the cover and off the crank and made this on a rapid prototype machine at work. So I was pretty lucky to be able to have the access to that. I'll show you how it works. So I put this piece over the crank where it centers. Okay, nice tight fit. And then push it onto the cover and let it sink into where the seal goes. Now I'm centered on the crank with the cover centered to the crank. So then all I got to do is worry about out here on the corners, just like I did on the rear cover. So checking this side, uh, zero out my gauge. I'm at zero on the pan rail, and when I slide it over to the cover, um, 11 to 12 thousandths, summer's in there. And on this side, Again, the gauge is still zero. I know it's hard for you to see the gauge just because of the angle, but you don't have to take my word for it. Um, we're at 11 to 12 here. Everything's torqued down, so time to take the spacer out. There we go. I know I'm centered on the crank. We measured these, and we know we're good. Before you put the pan on, uh, you have to put a bead of blue silicone on each of these areas where the front cover and the rear cover come in contact with the uh, with the block. Just a little dab. Put the gasket in place. Then put the pan in place. Gotta get over that uh, pickup. Try not to move the gasket around too much. Then put the bolts in and just get them all in the holes. Um, you don't want to tighten them down there. And the two long bolts go in the back. Like the covers, the pan's a structural member too of the LS. So uh, you have to be really careful and accurate about how you put it on. Uh, the back of the pan, actually this hole here and this one, I think, I think both these, uh, the bell housing actually bolts to those. Um, that's how much of a structural member of the uh, of the motor that the pan is. So the pan can't be uh, out from the back of the block at all and it can only be at a minimum of uh, ten thousandths, no more than ten thousandths in from the inside. So to check that distance from the back of the block I'm using a straight edge and a feeler gauge. The silver one is at thou and a half and the copper or the brass colored one is ten thousandths of an inch. So basically I'm putting straight edge against the back of the block and for the feeler gauges, uh, the one and a half needs to go through without a problem on the back of the pan, and then the ten thousandths I want it to stick, and it does here and over here. Same thing, inch and a half go, thou and a half goes through, and then the ten thou sticks. So I know I'm pretty good. Torque down the smaller. Um, oil pan bolts, the short ones, to 18 foot-pounds and these two back ones uh, to 106 inch-pounds and you do the small ones first and then do the, the two long ones. Pans on and torque down. Um, this, uh, the setback from the back of the block, it was a fair amount of trial and error of just loosening up the pan, pushing it back and forth, checking, tightening down. Uh, trial and error, but you can, you can get it done. So the bottom end is all buttoned up. Um, definitely different than a Gen 1 small block with, uh, again, the pan and the 
front cover and then a rear cover, which the Gen 1 doesn't even have. But these being structural members, you really, it's not just, you know, slap the stuff on. You really got to be careful with how you put it on.